What's inside of this is really cool. Guten yardening, everybody. Well, it's a beautiful day out here in early September, and behind me, I have our roost out potato bed. Now, in this bed, we have some mid season red, white, and yellow potatoes, and we're getting closer to that harvest time because they've been in there about three months. But as I came out here today to add a little bit more hay and to push up the sides because you know these potatoes tend to spread a little bit especially as the greens get a little older they fall off to the side and I was trying to get things a little bit neater I noticed something on these plants that I've definitely seen before but never in this quantity and the thing that I'm talking about are these potato berries now we've definitely had potato berries show up on our potatoes before but if you look down underneath here we have a ton this time around they are everywhere along this garden spot so in today's video i'm going to talk to you about everything i think you need to know about the potato berry well i've grabbed a little handful of these potato berries or sometimes they're referred to as potato fruit and i'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what makes them tick well first of all it is perfectly natural to get these potato berries on your plants now some varieties are sterile and won't produce these and other varieties like the ones we have over here right now, well, clearly they produce quite a few. And I think one of the things that's caused us to have so many of these potato berries this year is the fact that we had a lot of bumblebees, which are great pollinators for potatoes. The way that they pollinate, the buzzing that they do that really knocks that pollen loose, I think made a difference for those potatoes. I think that's why just in general, we're seeing a lot of these potato berries. Now potatoes are part of the nightshade family. Yeah, that same nightshade that you've heard about that's poisonous all this time. And the berries on top are not edible. Well, I suppose you could eat them, but in general, it's a very bad idea to eat them because they contain a glycoalkaloid called solanine. Now you've probably seen solanine whenever a potato has come to the surface and the sunlight has hit it and it starts to turn green. Well, the solanine that's in one of those potatoes is really on average much lower in quantity than what's inside one of these berries. So we're not going to try eating these at all. Now, if you have young children who you're worried about coming along and picking these and trying them out, that might be one of the only reasons why you would ever go along and pull these off the plant. It's really probably not going to inhibit any of the plant growth or anything like that. It's not going to have a major effect there. Now, I did just harvest this potato berry, and quite frankly, we've harvested these a little bit earlier than we planned to. We're actually going to let the plants die back completely before we harvest these because for the purpose that we have in mind for this, the longer it stays on and the more mature it gets, the more likely we are to see what's inside be fully mature. And what's inside of this is really cool. In fact, I've just cut it open and I'm gonna hold it up to the camera as close as I can so you can see inside of here, we have the true potato seeds. Now there are many things that I think are really cool about these true potato seeds, but one thing in particular is just how many true potato seeds are inside of a single potato berry. So as I spread this out right here, you can see, and I'm just squeezing this out a little bit. I'm not even going to get all of them, I think. A single potato berry can have potentially hundreds of true potato seeds. So much like a lot of the other fruit that we have out here, where we're collecting seeds from them, we're going to do the exact same thing with these potato berry seeds. So I've kept a couple of those seeds on my thumb here, and I'm guessing that one of the questions you might have in mind right now is, well, if we have potato berries and we can collect potato seeds from them, why don't people in general grow potatoes from those potato seeds? Why do we plant instead seed potatoes? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. Well, one of the reasons is pretty simple. It takes longer to grow potatoes from a seed than it does from a seed potato. So if you want to have an 80 day or a 90 day potato, well, you're looking at a good bit more time. With seeds like this, we're going to plant it much like we would a tomato. That means we're going to have to let it germinate. We're going to have to let it turn into a seedling, and then we're going to transplant it into whatever space it is that we're trying to grow our potatoes. And that means more time. 
Whereas with a seed potato, a couple of weeks in and you've already got green growth coming out and you're much farther along. So that's one reason. The second reason, and maybe a more important reason for a lot of people is that when you grow a potato from the seed, it is not going to grow true to its parent plant. That means, for example, if I take one of the purple magic molly potatoes that we just harvested and I use that as a seed potato, I'll get more magic molly purple potatoes. But if I take the true potato seed from that and try to plant it, I have no idea what that potato is going to look like. There's a possibility that the next generation of potatoes could be less disease resistant, could be a different color, could be any number of things different because it's not going to be 100% true to the parent. Unlike if I take one of my heirloom tomatoes, for example, collect the seed, I know that I'm gonna get that same tomato in return. Now, while that's true, a lot of the experimentation in terms of creating new potato varieties actually come from those true potato seeds. And so this year, one of the things we wanna do is experiment around and see what new varieties of potatoes we can come up with. Our plan is to allow all of these potato plants to die back the whole way, and then we're gonna harvest these berries at their most mature point, when they should be softer than they are right now. Now, I've never seen it, but I've read that some of these potato berries are actually purple when they fully mature, but many of them just stay green. So what we're looking for is that soft feeling so we can basically just do what I did before, where I squeezed out those seeds, but even easier. There is a slight gel coating. It's definitely not as pronounced as say on a tomato or a cucumber seed, but there is a slight gel coating around the seeds in here. And so we're gonna use the same process of putting these seeds in water to allow that to dissolve from it so that we can then store these seeds. We'll let them dry out a couple of weeks after that and we can store these seeds for up to about four or five years. At least that's what we've read. We've never done any long-term research on how viable they are after that period of time. Well, we hope this video demystifies this little berry for you. I know the first time that I saw them growing on our potato plants a couple of years ago, I had no idea what they were. And quite frankly, the research into this is fascinating. Now, if any of you have experimented with the true seeds inside of these potato berries before, we would love to hear the kind of results you got. Again, we plan to wait until these plants die completely back. We're gonna go get these and we're gonna harvest every single one that we can find. And who knows what variety we'll come up with next. It's possible that the varieties we find are going to be less disease resistant. It's possible that they don't produce very many potatoes. And it's also possible that we'll get some really cool Guten yardening potatoes out of this. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.